Good guess. Raise your hand. And the head. No blood, no go. There will be uh, there will be a line of sinners. These people all know, you know, they were mass murderers, pedophiles, and everything else. They already know they're going to hell, so they're in that line, all right? They're in the center line. Then you have the other line in the middle, which is the mini line. And these are people that are claiming to be Christians. They, they died believing. Now, this is astonishing, okay? This is really astonishing if you, if you look at the facts. That they believed they were Christians. And then they're arguing with God about all the religious things that they have done throughout their life, why they need to go to heaven. And so, and the Lord finally says, uh, I don't know you people. You ain't got no blood, you go with the bad people. Who goes to hell first? Come on, somebody tell me. I done repeated it 20,000 times. The fearful. The Here. fearful, that's right. The scaredy cats. The ones that are too scared to get saved, to get born again. They're too scared to call on Jesus and ask Him to come in their heart. They're too scared that my life will change. I was at a bar one time. No, no, don't, don't look at me like that. All right, all right. I was at a bar trying to get the guy to get saved, all right? Me and a buddy. He says, I know I need to get saved. He says, I know I need Christ. He says, but I got a bar, and if I give up, and if I accept Christ in my life, I will have to shut this place down. And all my friends come here. He said, well, you've got to provide another way for me to make an income. You know what? That's the least of your worries is money. Amen. I had a preacher, you know, uh, he was always broke, and then he asked the pastor, he said, uh, he said, you know, I'm always broken. I just can't pay my bills and everything yet, Allison. And he says, oh, don't worry. That's the least of your problems. You know, that's encouraging. Right? Don't you think, amen? That's, that's real encouraging. Hey, 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 amen. He said, forget about the bills. It'll get worse, all right? But the many are convincing, trying to convince God, let me in. Then you have the express line. Okay? The express line has the blood. Blood, come on, 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 come on. You got blood, blood, blood. Show me just blood. Show me blood. Show me blood. Okay, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. I want to be in the express line, all right? A -a Amen. I'm going to the express line because I've got the blood. I accepted Christ as my Savior years ago. Amen. I don't like that thing. Doesn't matter the words. Makes no difference what you say. It's what comes from deep down in your soul. And basically, God says there's two ways to get to heaven. I'll give you the first one. Amen. <coughs> Love and compassion. Show them how much God loves you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Amen. 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 So that's love and compassion. The second one is, scare the hell out of them. Amen. I mean, just scare the hell out of them. Amen. You're going to burn. You're going to fry. Worms are going to be all over your body. That's the biblical now. Amen. I'm not making this up. This is the verse. It says, some with love and compassion, some even hating the garments in the fire and pulling them out. You don't even want to touch them because they're so plagued with sin that you don't want to help them. Alright? But you do. You yank them out of the fire and they get born again. Amen. That's our job. So there's two ways. Son is love. I prefer love. Amen. But if love doesn't work, we'll go to plan B. Amen. Plan B is just scare the hell out of them. You're going to drop forever. You're going to smell like sulfur. We went to Yellowstone Park one time. George, would you believe that they have these little things and it bubbles up and it, goes, and it produces a smell, sulfur. You know what sulfur smells like? Rotten eggs. Amen. I 
I don't like to see my egg runny. A amen. That's why I prefer scrambled or medium. A a amen. I, I don't even want my eggs runny. A a a I, I just don't like that. A a amen. I don't even like uh, Can you imagine the sulfur having to smell that forever? Worms all over you. And for comfort, you are gnawing on your what? Tongue. You have eyes in hell. The richer man opened up his eyes. He could look afar. He could see all the people that were down in uh, Abraham's bosom. He could see all the people having a great time on the other side. And he's what? Burning up. Now he's still, you know, he thinks he's still got power because he's a rich man. A rich man always thinks he's got power, right? You know, brutal people around him. So he says, uh, Mr. Abraham, uh, send that poor guy over there and uh, tell him to come over here and uh, take water and put it in my tongue because my tongue is so hot. Can you do that for me? Uh, let me think about it. No. All right. Uh, can you send him back? Because I got 10 brothers. And they're all like me. None of them believe in this place. Will you send him back so that they can get saved, get born again, and not have to come where I'm at? And Abraham thought about it a little while and said, No. He said, That's why they got the church. That's why they got preaching. That's why they got preachers. Amen. If they won't read the Bible and they won't listen to the preacher, <coughs> oh well. Amen. Amen. God chose the foolishness of preaching that a man might be saved. It sounds like I, I'm a fool up here sometimes. Amen. And sometimes I act like a fool. A amen. 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 You say, why? I'm fighting the TV. Amen. amen. A you know, y'all have a remote control brain. Amen. You don't like the channel? You switch the channel. Amen. I mean, I, I, I gotta be quick, man. If I ain't quick in like that, you'll be switching me off. Amen. And the next thing you know, you're watching your novella. A amen. Mm. Did you hear about Rosa? Oh, man, she's in serious trouble. I don't know if she's gonna make it. <laughs> <laughs> Exodus chapter 17. We'll pick up there. They've crossed over. They sang what? They sang praises. They crossed the Red Sea. Pharaoh's army is drowned. They're praising God. They're shouting. Three days later, they're complaining again. Complain, complain, complain. Let me tell you what happens to the rest of the Old Testament. They complain and murmur. Amen. That's not the kind of Christian you want to grow up to be. A complainer and a murmur. So they go all the way, three days, they find some water, it's bitter, and God tells the preacher, Moses, cut down a tree, let the tree fall in the water, and the water will be good. Mm. Then he starts feeding them. He feeds them bread, manna from heaven. He says, now here's the rules. Six days you can go and get manna. Now, on Monday, go get manna. If you save any on Monday, on Tuesday morning, it will become worms. You do not want worms in your house. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. <coughs> on the last day, which is Friday, because Sabbath is Saturday for the Jews, ours is Sunday because we are the church. Thank you. Amen. 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 And so on Friday, he said get twice as much. <coughs> so, people get twice as much. Some don't. What happens to the ones that go out there looking for food? On Saturday, there's no man. Oh, wait a minute. It was here yesterday and the day before the, and the month before. Well, where is it today? Here. Hey, Amen. Amen. Then they, then they started complaining because there was no meat. So God said, okay, all you quail that are up there flying, land, just stay there until somebody picks you up and kills you and then eats you. Mm. And you cannot eat raw chicken, right? Right. Mm. You ever try to kick, uh, what's the cheapest? Lake quarters, right? right? Mm. It takes forever to cook those things, right? <laughs> I mean, forever. 
<laughs> so here you are, keep cooking your quail, and you're starving, amen, because you want some meat, and you start biting, it's got blood, and God says, you're dead. Mm. Next thing you know, worms start coming out of their nose. Mm. I mean, these people have died. You know why? Because God's law in the Old Testament had to be kept. Thank God we live in the New Testament. Amen. Somebody say amen, amen there. A a hallelujah. Amen. Because yeah, if you lived in the Old Testament, you were a Jew. No pork chops. Amen. Uh, no bacon. A a amen. But uh, uh, chapter 17, they're still wandering in the desert because God doesn't want them to fight. He finally builds their strength up. Gives them water, chapter 17. He gives them water again. He smotes the river. Water gushes. People, you know, get water for themselves, their animals, their, you know, their herds, everything. Mm -hmm. Chapter 18 in, the seven, in Exodus 17, verse 8, they come across a group called the Amaleks, which fought with Israel and Riphidim. And Moses said into Joshua, by the way, there's a book called Joshua. You know why? He's, uh, he's going to take over Moses' job. Hmm. When Moses gets old enough and finally retires, guess who had? Somebody's got to take over. Right. You know, one day, I will not longer be a pastor here. Amen? Hmm. I hope it's 20 years, 30 years, whatever, but sooner or later, amen? I'm going to get too old. Uh, amen? And somebody's going to have to take over. Amen. Mm -hmm. Joshua is being trained. He's being trained as a warrior. He's being trained as a holy man. He's being trained to listen to God. Moses is teaching.